In the early 20th century, consuming radioactive materials or smearing them on your skin was all the rage. On March 1st, 1896, French physicist Henri Becquerel discovered the radioactive properties of uranium. Soon afterward, it was found that polonium, thorium and radium emitted radiation too, with Marie Curie first coining the term radioactivity. People began creating products, from Doramad radioactive toothpaste to radioactive cards you could put in your cigarette packets to enhance your cigarette smoking. Spoiler alert, it did not. One product became a favourite of American sportsman and socialite Eben Byers. Byers was a steel mogul and athlete who had himself the reputation of being a bit of a ladies' man after winning the US Amateur Golf Championship in 1906. Wow. In 1927, he fell off a bed on a train and injured his arm, which reportedly hampered him in both the athletic and sexual department. Oh. His doctor prescribed him a drink called Radithor for his pain, likely because the inventor of the drink, William J. A. Bailey, offered doctors money for every drink they prescribed. Byer's pain cleared up, either by coincidence or placebo, and he attributed it to Radithor. <laughs> the problem was that Radithor was essentially radium diluted in water, like cancer-flavoured Kool-Aid. From then on, he was convinced of the drink's benefits, and sent cases of the deadly juice to business colleagues, girlfriends, and even fed it to his racehorses. This is like sending slow-acting cyanide or toilet duck to your football initiations and demanding that everybody chug. For his own part, he drank 1,400 half-ounce bottles of the expensive drink without being asked to chug. Now, at the time, he wasn't to know any better. Regulators were not convinced of harmful effects and actually took action against one maker of the radioactive medicines because they hadn't put in as many deadly radioactive materials as they promised. After several years of necking radiation like it was going out of fashion, which it was because of cancer, he began to lose weight, get headaches, and many of his teeth began to fall out. He told his doctor that he'd lost that toned up feeling which is a fairly mild way of putting that your bones have begun to crumble. In 1931, regulators began to wake up to news that radiation is bad for you. They asked Byers if he'd like to testify at hearings, but by this point he was far too sick, and instead a statement was sent through his lawyer. It relayed that Byers' whole upper jaw, excepting two front teeth and most of his lower jaw, had been removed. As well as this, the lawyer reported all the remaining bone tissue of his body was disintegrating and holes were actually forming in his skull. He had only learned his case was terminal a few weeks before his death, aged 51, by which point only six of his teeth remained. He was buried in a lead coffin. Goodbye. Following his death, many other doctors, the real kind, not the ones who had prescribed deadly toxins for mild injuries, testified about the ill effects of radiation, leading to the end of the radioactive quackery industry. The inventor of the drink, meanwhile, insisted that his drink was safe until his death of bladder cancer in 1949. When medical researchers exhumed his corpse 20 years later, his insides were ravaged by radiation and his remains were still warm. <laughs>